right, uh, so I will start. With Chainlink proof of reserves, we leverage on Chainlink's decentralized Oracle network that has been secured tens of billions of dollars in DeFi to verify assets collateralization. Be it of chain collaterals like for stable coins or tokenized RWAs, where reserves are mainly deposited on various banks or third-party custodians, also proof of reserves for on-chain collaterals, which you can verify and check wrapped assets on the destination chain against where the native assets are locked on the source chain. So here the diagram illustrates how the Chainlink decentralized Oracle network monitors the third-party auditor or the third-party attesters reported a set vault values and submit these reserve answers to the proof of reserve feed contract on chain. So here, uh, whenever there is a change on the vault's uh, reserve values, the Oracle nodes observe that change, come to a consensus within the dawn, create a report, and then submit the latest reserve answer to the proof of reserve feed on chain. And who are the stakeholders which can benefit uh, from proof of reserve? Right. Firstly, is the token issuers themselves right, to be able to provide greater transparency of solvency, proving that sufficient assets or collaterals are fully backing the token. Second, the DeFi apps and developers can integrate proof reserve fee as verification logic checks or circuit breaker in smart contracts to prevent minting or even prevent accepting these unbacked or under collateralized tokens. And third, definitely DeFi participants, the community, the token holders, having a boost of confidence and peace of mind, knowing that these tokens are sufficiently backed. So in short, projects, developers can leverage proof of reserve as an added layer of security, increase transparency for their stakeholders, boost community trust, and finally, gaining a competitive, competitive edge being a leader in the space to integrate proof of reserve. Transparency versus opaqueness, which would you choose? But right, hello and welcome to Chainlink Tech Talk session. My name is Joshua Ching and I'm a solutions architect here at Chainlink Labs. Today, we're very fortunate to have Benjamin Stani from Matrix Port. And we're going to talk about proof of reserve and the implementation on STBT token. Benjamin, welcome. Perhaps you could give us a quick round of introduction of what you're working on at Matrix Port and also Matrix Dog and the background of the companies and what is, is it aiming to solve? Yeah, sure. Thank you for having me, Joshua. And thanks once for the introduction. We're uh, excited of what, what's been built there on, on Chainlink Labs as a partner. Um, Matrix Port is uh, one of the largest digital asset service provider uh, spun out as a standoff uh, from Bitmain in 2019, um, very deeply rooted in the ecosystem in Asia, but generally like um, uh, on the crypto side and a global scale. And uh, Matrix Doc is our real world asset brand that has been launched at the beginning of the year, um, where we're focusing on tokenizing real world assets and um, uh, have launched the first product, which is um, called Short-Term short -term Treasury Bill Token, STBT, which uh, relies on uh, daily proof of reserves um, in a fully bankruptcy remote fascia. Right. RWA tokenization has been an increasing focus, right, in the blockchain industry. You know, with BCG, JP Morgan, a couple more reports mentioned a total addressable market of in the trillions of dollars in the coming years. And what do you think that is? And why is it something you decided to pursue? And perhaps some benefits do you see in uh, tokenized RWAs? Yeah, so I've mentioned like the first RWA that, that we've been working on is this tokenized treasury bill token. And what we've seen over the past 18 months uh, is a drastic divergence between on-chain yields uh, in DeFi and the risk-free rate that you can generate off-chain. If you think back like beginning of last year, um, you're able to generate easily double digits into uh, in DeFi while treasury rates were close to zero. And then uh, Luna happened and we had a couple of other collapses in the ecosystem. And um, uh, basically, if you go back to end of 4Q last year, where crypto yields have, have uh, collapsed and um, uh, US government paid you close to 4.5%. Now that has continued to increase, but um, a lot of the crypto players were jealously eyeing um, the risk-free rate off-chain. And so uh, that has brought the demand for, for bringing that rate into a, a liquid form on chain. 
And obviously, RWAs have, have two major benefits. Um, they're bringing increased transparency. They're bringing 24-7 liquidity, as well as cheaper transaction costs. And they're also allowing the origination of, of new type of assets. Yeah, I think, yeah, indeed, I think tokenization of RWA brings a lot of uh, major benefits when it comes to, you mentioned just now, increased transparency, 24-7 liquidity, lower transaction costs overall. I think this is also resonated in the recent EY research where investors are mostly now interested to invest on tokenized private funds, securities, fixed income products uh, like, you know, T-bills, bonds, and et cetera. And I know Matrix Doc has launched tokenized T-bills called STBT short-term treasury bill token. Can you give us you know, an overview of the process of STBT? How is it different from uh, the other tokenized assets out there? Maybe uh, perhaps also some key unique features and benefits of STBT. Better. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Uh, happy to, to give you a quick brief overview of STBT. Uh, let me share my slides here. So <laughs> STBT, uh, as we mentioned before, uh, the yield that US government uh, is now paying on short-term debt, which is generally considered as the risk-free rate in traditional finance, um, has exceeded 5%. And so that that brought that demand for uh, the risk-free rate uh, into the DeFi ecosystem on-chain. And um, while stablecoin issues have added T-bills to their protocols, uh, obviously, um, there's an advantage if you can replicate T-bills directly in a tokenized form. Uh, the way that that um, this works at, at Matrix Talk, um, I mentioned before, um, uh, in February 2013, uh, Matrix Talk has launched real-world assets. Uh, and um, the first token that we've created was uh, STBT. Uh, STBT stands for Short-Term Treasury Bill and exclusively deploys reserve assets in short-term US Treasury securities with six month maturity or less, uh, or reverse repo or cash. And the token itself is, gen is uh, launched as an ERC-1400 standard token um, that is only offered to accredited investors and gives them that, that type of exposure. Um, now, what, what do we offer here? Um, it's basically a diversification for stable coins. Um, STBT is designed to allow stable coin holders to access uh, this risk-free rate via T-bills um, in a completely transparent on-chain way. Uh, the fee rate is very competitive. Um, what you can see here, for example, uh, we've compared it to two of the other major T-bill providers here. Uh, and SDBT is, um, uh, we're only charging 10 basis points annualized of the yield. Um, then there's the intermediate fee of, of the assets that the custodian is charging. And then there's a, a redemption fee in case you want to redeem this token one-to-one -to -one with uh, uh, stable coins. At the moment, um, there's a, most of the major stable coins are, are supported for minting SDBT and um, uh, as long as you pass the KYC and restriction to be on the whitelist, um, uh, then you'll be able to hold SDBT. There's a web free connection as well, um, which is the Minter contract. And um, that allows for uh, anyone permissionlessly to interact um, with the Minter contract and send stable coins to the smart contract address and then mint SDBT from there. The other thing that I should mention here is that uh, obviously because this is on chain, uh, security and, and uh, audits are very important. So there's been two uh, security audit firms, BlockSec and Selig, um, that have uh, audited both the STPT contract as well as the Minter contract. Right. Yeah. Speaking of security, you know, STBT token has integrated proof of reserve verification checks into the minting logics. So ensuring that STBT supply on chain is always equal or less than what the proof of reserve reports. Otherwise, minting will revert. So making sure that STBT is sufficiently backed and fully collateralized off chain and very excited as well to provide this additional security to STBT token. And uh, Ben, maybe you could also share a little bit more like why is it important to have proof of reserve and how does it benefit STBT maybe in terms of security, transparency or holders confidence as such? Yeah, absolutely. So we we made sure that um, STBT goes uh, the full length in terms of uh, transparency, and um, uh, for that uh, we're very happy to be partnering with Chainlink and the Proof of Reserves, where 
in real time, uh, users can uh, verify at any point in time that uh, the underlying assets held in the bank accounts um, backing SDBT are equal or, or higher than the outstanding number of tokens. And um, what that means is that there's, there's no need to uh, trust the issuer because this is enshrined in the, the smart contract logic, as you mentioned before, uh, that there can be never more STBT than what the proof of reserve attestations is. And um, what we've also done in terms of uh, reducing trend, uh, counterparty risk uh, is set this all up in a bankruptcy remote orphan entity. Um, this is an SPV structure where uh, basically the assets are, are backed by securities um, and uh, there's no counterparty risk involved with matrix port, the, the parent company. Awesome, awesome. And Maybe one question, what does SDBT enable for you know, DeFi, DeFi ecosystem and its use cases in the coming future? So SDBT is really seen as, as a, a building block. Um, you can uh, think of it as a, as a on-chain T-bill token, uh, a way that you can get that risk-free rate on-chain. And so that means uh, it, it's very seamless and cost efficient for on and off ramp because Matrix Stock can provide the minting and redemption both via OTC as well as the, the smart contract, uh, the minter contract that I was showing before. Um, it's it's an on chain treasury tool that um, allows anybody that currently holds stable coins, which natively can't generate any yield, um, to uh, generate that risk free rate while having. Uh, similar underlying risk profile, which is US government securities, which is generally considered as uh, the risk-free rate. And so this is attractive for DeFi projects, for, for DAO treasuries, for protocol treasuries, um, for VCs that have raised and haven't deployed or high net worth that, that want to have assets on chain. And it's also an interesting primitive um, on the DeFi side for yield farming funds um, because they can provide STBT related liquidity and to on-chain pools and then earn liquidity rewards by providing uh, that, that uh, on-chain liquidity. One more question. Are you considering or the team is considering offering more kind of this kind of a tokenized RWAs in the future? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the short answer is um, matrix doc has been created um, as our RWA unit, and we plan to launch multiple products in that area. Uh, real world assets is something that we are very passionate about and believe is the future. But at the moment, I think the major focus for us is this treasury token. Uh, we are looking at uh, 100 billion of market cap um, in just fiat backed stable coins out there that are currently generating zero interest natively. And so uh, there's, there's still a long way just for, for this one product um, to take off. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge market out there. And um, and this is only we're just about to start in this kind of industry. And do you have, for, for the developers out there, right, do you have any recommendations for the developers out there building tokenized assets? Yeah, so I think, I think if you're developing tokenized real world assets. Um, generally, the first thought, pro thought process you should be going through is like, who are you actually targeting this token to? Yeah, um, can, can they buy it? So, as I mentioned, SDBT is um, uh, going through um, a KYC process. So it's only for accredited investors, um, which means it's it's a KYC token, it's a permission token. And um, uh, that's the first thing that, that you have to think about, whether what you're going to do with your um, RWA token will be uh, considered as a security in most jurisdictions. Um, and then the second question that, that you should be focusing on is um, what's the strength of having this on-chain? Yeah, um, obviously you can have better transparency is what we're showcasing here. Um, you can better liquidity and ease of transfer. So this should be your main selling points and should be pain points for your users that you're trying to solve with, with your token. Exactly. I think uh, the strengths of having on-chain is transparency, greater access to liquidity and the ease of transfer. That's very true. And um, your prediction, like what are your predictions for you know the future of tokenized RWAs? Um, is there anything you're particularly excited about with the future of this industry? Yeah, so I, I, I 
said it before, I think the part that that I'm very excited about is just just the, the treasury side of things, for example, like we have a hundred billion over a hundred billion of of fiat backed stable coins. Um, and uh, we've only got uh, a few hundred million of uh, tokenized T-bills in the market. So that's a tiny fraction. But if you look at like the size of the US government securities, T-bills, uh, that's uh, over 11 trillion, right? So that's more than 10x of the entire crypto market cap. Uh, and that's that's just one type of, of off-chain security, right? If you're looking then at other asset classes, you can get an idea of, of the scope and potential of, of what we're talking about here. Billions of dollars that we we're talking about just now from the reports that we, we get as well, from the, the online articles that we read as well. That's a lot of, uh, to come. Um, where can you know viewers like us learn more about uh, Matrix Doc and how can we get involved? Yeah, the best way is to go to the, the Matrix Doc website, www.matrixdoc.com, and then follow us on Twitter or our Telegram accounts. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Or, of course, feel free to reach out for me as well. Nice. <laughs> oh, Benjamin, thank you so much for your time today. And thank you for explaining SDBT in more detail and also the implementation of proof of reserves and how it can tremendously help to increase adoption. We look forward to, you know, together having greater collaborations. And thank you everyone for watching this Tech Talk. Have a great day. Thank you.